Hey guys, and welcome back to Let's Play Tales of Berseria with Elixir Video Games. Last time we uh, we did a lot. We went through the Earth Pulse, watched a lot of Earth and Historia memories of Velvet's past and also um, Artorius's past. Interesting. Um, and then we fought against a Chimera, and uh, we're actually on the victory screen for that Chimera fight um, because the episode ended up being really long. Um, and I was like, well, it would have ended up way longer if I'd kept going. So <laughs> here we are. <laughs> so yeah, um, I guess we'll just continue on where we left off then. It. This farce is just another of Venomenot's illusions! Farce? How callous. That farce is the true face of my sister. <sighs> she hates, resents, devours, and kills. She tramples people, cities, everything, living only by her emotions. What an ugly, tainted soul. It's not like that! Nothing you say will matter. She knows. She knows if it's the truth. He's right. Just think. Everything I did was baseless. Arrogant. And even so, I still... You hurt so many innocent people, didn't you? More than I can count. I devoured and killed so many. Without even knowing Arthur's true aims. I destroyed people. I destroyed whole towns. And worse yet, you didn't even show mercy to your own sister's reincarnation. I... And despite all of that, I still love you, Velvet. That's why I chose to become a sacrifice for you, sister. But think, if you try to stop the resurrection, wouldn't my death be all for nothing? To tell you the truth, I was terrified of dying. It was so dark. I'm sorry. <laughs> So sorry. You'll accept it then? That everything you've done up until this point, all of it. Yes. It was all for nothing and for no one. I hurt so many people, all for no reason. I'm a monster. If you've accepted it, you have to atone for your sins. Once I eat the final two malevolences inside you, I'll fully awaken. Give them to me. Give me your hatred, your despair. If you do, I can cleanse this world of all its pain. I had hoped that you could live in a world without pain and sadness. But you're a monster now. You don't belong there. <sighs> Velvet! Let me go. I have to go. If you don't, you'll die too for no reason. No! A twisted monster like me doesn't deserve to live. Don't you understand? You're the reincarnation of the first sacrifice. Part of me. Don't worry, I'll devour you too. 
Lofty set, tell this self-absorbed idiot what she needs to hear! Please... Let me go... Will you stop whining?! Huh? No, I don't understand! You snap at people! You're scary! You... you tried to eat me! But... You're also kind! And you're filled with life! I don't understand a single thing about you! <sighs> but you gave me a name! When I was a number! You gave me that compass! You taught me what it meant to be alive! That's why I care about you, Velvet! I'll protect you for my own sake! Fee... I don't care if you're malevolent, or if it was pointless! If the world says it's a mistake to love you, I'll fight the whole world! I don't care how much pain you feel! It doesn't matter! A world without you, Velvet! Is the one thing I couldn't bear! Let me go. My hand will... Eat my arm! I don't care! Just leave me the other one! I needed to clobber the jerk who made my velvet cry! I... I love them all. I loved Loppy... and Zelika... Arthur... everyone... to have it all stolen from me! Why them? Why not me? It hurts so much! Your despair, how is it gone? <laughs> A flame burns in my heart, too. A flame I cannot quench, no matter how hard I try. Just like you, Velvet. I finally understand... ...how you felt. But the only one I can fight for... ...is myself. That's good enough. That's proof that you are truly alive. How many times do you plan to destroy and rebuild your own heart, Magilu? We're on a hundred and seven. Or was it a hundred and eight? I lost count. Not that I really care. Pathetic fool. Did I not tell you it would require an iron will as indomitable as the very trees that live and die across millennia? Like you, I suppose. Or that boy over there? That is the foundation of an ideal world. One free from man's sins. <laughs> An ideal world, huh? You, kid. The boy who was your companion, Lafayette. He's alive. 
Chasing a terrifying demon girl, he has learned the immensity of the seas and weathered the dry wastes of the land. <sighs> Those people, they're different from us. Despite the pain, the anguish, they embrace the life they've been given. They live undaunted by the ugliness of the world! <gasps> So you're doing this all for them? Is that what this is? <laughs> Not even close. They aggravate me to my wit's end. <laughs> like stabs in the chest, over and over and over. And that's exactly why. That's why I intend to see how all of this ends. I won't be satisfied until I do. Words bereft of meaning. You truly are my greatest failure. Gosh, funny just how little I care. No! Let me guess. We came at a good time? You're late. Because of you, I had to have a really boring conversation. So, you came face to face with Inominat. If so, then you must know that your quest for revenge is utterly meaningless. Yeah, I did. I know why sadness fills the world. And I know how deep are the burdens of sin. I tried to abandon my memories of Arthur and Laffy, to cut myself off from it all, and end this tragedy. It's... it's what they would have wanted. Exactly. You do well to know your place. But that's exactly why I can't forgive them. Not Artorius, not Inominat. I know my heart is ugly and full of contradictions, but those days we spent together in familial warmth, they're proof that I, that all of us, were truly alive. That's why, no matter how hard, no matter how sad it gets, I will take my vengeance to the very end! Velvet! Don't be a fool! Just give up and die like you ought! It is your destiny to wallow in despair! You take my family, turn me into a monster, and you want my soul too? Now who's being the fool? Remember this well. The Lord of Calamity never gives up, not even in the face of death. Have you no shame for your sins, you unholy monster? <laughs> Let me in on this. I lost a bet and I've got some anger to work out. You sure you can fight in your condition? I thought you'd never ask. I am the dastardly witch Magilu, scourge of self-righteous exorcists! Now face the wrath of Magilu Maven! Fools, all of you! Oh my god! Everything is happening all at once and I don't know what to say! Ah! Everyone, sorry to have worried you. I wasn't worried. I didn't realize you were someone who needed looking after. Me neither. This is our way of saying we trust you. Yeah. You were horrible in praise. See? Stabbed in the chest. That's all you give me. Okay, this is going well so far. Okay, so where do we even start? Um, <laughs> that, that scene with um, Velvet and Lovisa is just perfect. Holy cow. Um... The bit where Lapisette yells at her to stop whining is just- it's my favourite line in the entire game. Because 
Oh my god, for the, the longest amount of time before it. The longest amount of time before that part in my first playthrough, I was like, wow, Velvet is really actually just annoying. Like, she was just bugging me so much because she was constantly whining. Um, and then Lavis is just like, stop whining. <laughs> and it's just, it's my favourite part of the entire thing. I like, obviously, now that I'm, now that I'm replaying it, I'm having a little bit more sympathy for her, uh, her lowest moments. Um, but it's also like, I still love that moment where you just get the satisfaction of Lapis it just being like, shut up, stop whining. You can't just die here. Um, and I love that so much. Um, and then obviously this part as well with Magilu. Magilu, oh my god. I love her so much. This scene um, is actually what solidifies her as one of my favourite characters in this game. Um, I think Magilu, Aizen and Lapiset are like my three top favourite characters in this game. Which I wouldn't have um, guessed before I started playing. Well, except for Aizen. I kind of knew he was going to be my fave, but that's because it's Aizen and Aizen's you know, just eyes and I love him. Um, I see Lapis in yeah, this. Good dang it, Lapis it. Um, hi, Mogulu. Um, but yeah, this scene just completely cemented it. Also, um, Mogulu and Maven, eh? <laughs> oh, man. I, uh, yeah, I don't know. You can kind of guess. I guess, like, certain things about Magilu just from- oh no. Oh, I've been inflicted with slow? Are you kidding? Okay, uh, Panacea. I want that soul. I want that soul as well. I want all the souls. The Lord of Calamity wants all souls. I also love the- um, the Velvet just kind of completely took on the persona of Lord of Calamity there. You know, she was like, no. This is it. I am the Lord of Calamity. I'm gonna take down the Shepherd. Ow! That hurt, Melchior! Um, I have a lot of feelings about Melchior. Um, largely negative feelings about Melchior. I died. Yeah, I have a lot of largely negative feelings about Melchior. Um, I, I really hate him, honestly. I'll talk more about him later on, but um, I hate him. I really do. <laughs> he just really annoys me. Okay, I'm gonna go around, I guess. Basically, so far, what has he shown us to be? The kind of guy who manipulates people, who seems to be able to know everything and to have a comeback for every tiny thing to not allow us any way past him. It's really dissatisfying. But like, I was at a writing seminar um, a couple weeks ago, or last week I think it was actually, and um, well by the time this video was up like a few weeks ago, and in that writing seminar we were talking about um, satisfaction and dissatisfaction stories, and like, the idea that you know, you can, like, hating a character or a situation or something, it's just not getting what you wanted is often a good thing in storytelling. Um, because it means that later on there's an opportunity for that dissatisfaction to be paid off with satisfaction. Um, so, I don't know. I'm, I'm just kind of sad here, like, Melchior, please eventually, eventually give me a chance to be satisfied because I'm very dissatisfied with you right now. I'm gonna uh, panacea a bulb. Because Aizen's not here for some reason. Okay, I'm low on souls. What's he weak to? Wind. Okay. 
Let's try and stun him. Oh, that, okay, that hurt. Also, um, yeah, you can maybe see you know, why I decided to, um, oh, I didn't know he was stunned there. You can maybe see you know, why I decided to <laughs> cut off the episode where I did. I absolutely knew that this was going to happen. That, um, there would be the second boss fight straight after, and that it was probably going to take long enough that the last episode would have been super long. So, uh, here we are. Oh, man. Oh, on the bright side, it gives me a chance to be at Melchior. Oh, does Isa have the, yeah, Isa has the second Mystic card now, nice. Oh, crap, 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 crap. Oh, are you kidding? I did have two souls until you forget- oh, thank you. Oh, oh no, they died. Oh, that's not great. Okay. He's, he keeps going after my boy as well, that's really rude of him. Uh, Eleanor. Because I noticed she got life, so... Uh, that will come in extremely handy! Okay. There we go! Okay. Yes! Okay. Let's beat this old man up. Which, um, don't say that out of context because that will actually maybe get you put in jail. Don't beat old people up. Do you think you pushed me this far? I don't know what your boundaries are, Melchior. I... Uh. Also, like, I haven't mentioned it yet. Um, but like, this is a familiar place. Um, I'll talk more about that later. No mercy! You thought I'd stop there. Annihilating? Holy cow, that did damage. Okay. This is actually really fun. I'm very glad I get to beat him up. Okay, I didn't get power hits, but I did break his shield quite a lot. His shield? His guard. Oh. Oh! Wow, okay. Oh! That's... Okay. Oh no. Yeah, okay, that was gonna happen, wasn't it? Okay, you bring me back, please. Yes, right now, which is a stupid idea. Oh, hello. Mine. 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 Oh no. Uh, neither do I. Okay. Well, thank you someone... Uh, it must have been Eleanor. Thank you, Eleanor, for bringing back that dude. Okay. Ah, crap! For an old man, he uh, runs pretty fast. Isn't that what Sabine said that one time? Yes! Tell Artorius and you know me not. They took something precious from me. I'll never forgive them for that. The annals of history are stained with evil people like you. You spread havoc and destruction all to satisfy your own ends. A dark font of malevolence. You're a demon lord, the irredeemable embodiment of sin. The Lord of Calamity. It is the exorcist's duty to destroy you. You talk a lot. How about you keep talking and tell us where Ifrid is? You'll regret this. I can feel he know me not. He's coming. We can fight here no longer. Bienfu, close the rift. I can't! Come forth!
Carelessness will get you killed. Zavid! <sighs> you ruined the moment. Huh? Don't you mean, thanks for saving us, Zavid? You're my hero and role model. Thank you for saving us, Zavid. Where exactly are we now? We're in an abbey facility on Hexen Isle. I heard Melchior was in charge here, so I snuck in. I hadn't expected an extra-dimensional space. Is there a way out? There is now that I busted my way in. Let's head outside. We can talk then. Uh... Who's that? A friend. His name is number one. Hey, wanna come with us? If you stay here alone, a dragon might get you. I bet you wouldn't like that. Yeah, that sounds scary. Great! Come on, kid. What are you doing? We can't leave him like this. I'll get him a vessel, somehow. <sighs> Do what you like. We did it! It took seven minutes! Okay, that's not as bad as it could have been. Are they gonna talk? No? Okay, here we are on the Calyx, the realm of testing, on Hex and Isle! With the same freaking music and everything! This was in hysteria! Oh man. Um. I am super glad that they added this in. Um. So basically, if you've not played hysteria, the EX dungeon in hysteria is, um on Hex and Isle, and there are eight of these mini dungeons um, called the Calyxes, and this is one of them. I spent half of the time when I was in the Calyxes for my Let's Play trying to decide which one was the one in Berseria. <laughs> I think it's either the second one or the fourth one. I'm not entirely sure though. Um, I have to double check. But yeah, here we are on Hex and Isle with Zavid as well, which that explains a lot of things as well about how Zavid and Zisteria Knows so, knows so much about Hex and Isle because he's been here before. I really, I really enjoy that. Anyway, let's have a look at our expedition. That came back um, while we were fighting. Take a look at this. Well done. I'd expect no less from Eifried's crew. Okay. Oh, we discovered Tipo Island. We discovered Swimwear Lapiset. And uh, we have I guess, some basic training for the next one. All right then. Um, okay, we still need to get two of the materials, so we'll go back Scout there. Scout ship setting sail. Okay. Um, we now also have Tipo Island. This forbidden island is protected by a barrier wall called the Schism. It its inhabitants love everything pink, which has led some people to call it Pinkest Isle. I'm pretty sure Tipo is Zillia too. I think. Um, anyway, we also have a new treasure that we didn't get to look at um, last time, so let's have a look that at that. That color reminds me of the Scarlet Knight. Oh. Wow! It's spectacular, Velvet! Hmm? That deep, deep red. It's like a sunset reflected in the ocean. That's what you see? Huh? Did I say something funny? No, not at all. But I hadn't noticed that's the same color of a sunset I, saw, I once saw with Luffy. I guess the beauty in anything comes from what you bring to it. That's really sweet! Wow! Oh my goodness, I didn't expect that. Uh, we also got swimwear for Lapiset. Let's have a look at that. Uh, simple swimwear that can be worn under ordinary clothes before a swim. It's the same as Rokuro's one. Um, we also got Jackalus outfit for Lapset. I can't remember when we got that. An outfit without a collar, pouch, and other things to slow Lapset down. I actually had him in this one um, for the majority of my playthrough because, um, I don't know, the thing around his neck kind of makes me think that that's like his servant clothes or something, but he was reborn in this outfit. It's really weird. I don't know. Anyway. Oh my god, it's really weird to be back here. You seem awfully chipper, Velvet. I'm fine. And I guess I have you to thank as well. Perhaps. 
but gratitude doesn't suit you. Now, say, ah. Uh... Huh? I need to see your teeth. I made a hundred gold bet that you'd break, remember? So, I need to see if you've broken anything. Let's start with those teeth. Help us out, kiddo. All right. I just need to check our front teeth, right? Front teeth, canines, whatever. Just get in there and take a good hard look. You didn't mean that literally, did you? Why are you making Fee do the checking? Acting the innocent maiden, are we? Well, I suppose that some say that showing the inside of your mouth can be more personal than being seen naked. What? Seriously? Mogilu, you're only making this even more awkward. Come now, will you cooperate or not? We can't settle the bet until we know the tooth. Fine, but let's check the ones in my left hand first. Good. I believe Bienfu can assist with that. Why me? Leave me out of this! Bien! She's squeezing me! Ouch! Those fangs hurt! <laughs> Looks like Velvet is just fine. Yeah, the sparks returned to her eyes. But, uh... Is showing the inside of your mouth really that embarrassing? What? Keep your intrusive questions to yourself! Well, the end was dead again! <laughs> the size of the art that created this place. Just what is the Abbey planning to use it for? Whatever it is, they're trying hard to keep it hidden. Can't be anything good. Sophie has a little picture in the corner, that's cute. They could have drawn a new one for him, like the ones in Hysteria, but never mind. Um, yeah, I've never heard of showing the inside of your mouth to be something super personal, but maybe that's just because dentists are a thing here. Not like, you know, in modern day society. We have dentists. Um, don't know if they have those back at this point. Back here? I don't know. Anyway. Uh, can I grab this chest without getting in a fight, preferably? Um, I have uh, bad memories of every single fight on this island. Not this island in particular, I mean like, the Hexadile. <laughs> oh man. Seriously though, it's really cool to be back here. Really weird, really nostalgic, I want to say. I don't know. I associate this place with hysteria. Hey. Who was that kid, anyway? He and I used to be tethered to an exorcist named Lady Teresa. He was number one, I was number two. Oh-ho! A friend of yours, then. So he went feral after that Teresa lady fell. Yeah. I found Velvet and the others, but he probably had nowhere to go. A stray Moloch stripped of his free will won't go much further than a demon's belly. Anyway, seems like the only people I run into these days are kids. I'm more in the market for an unattached woman with a pretty face. Um, sorry? <laughs> I'm just fooling around. Grow a sense of humor, kid. Anyway, relax. I'll keep an eye on him until he's in command of himself again, all right? Just one more reason to bring the Abbey down. Right. Thanks, Savid. Looks like Zavid's sense of humor hasn't changed much at the very least. <laughs> oh man, I've missed Zavid! I never thought I'd say that, but I've missed him. <laughs> it's so weird seeing him again in this game as well. Oh man. Just everything that's related to Zysteria is making me go like, Oh my god, remember that? I love that game. <laughs> oh dear, okay. Let's, let's continue running. As we're supposed to do. Ah. We'll eventually get another skip. And I'm worried that I'll- oh no. That I'll get in a dangerous encounter apparently! Uh, okay. We're good. Seriously, which Calyx is this? Hey Luffy said, can you think of a good name for the kid? You're giving number one a name? Yeah, he says he can't remember his true name, and calling him by a number seems mean, you know? Yeah, I was really happy when Velvet gave me my name. Hey, I've got this. How about Hajime? It means the first, and he's number one, right? In that case, why not just go with Ichiro? No way. That was Shigure's childhood name. Why should that matter to us? 
It should be softer. How about Ichi? Or maybe... something like Numbi? Numbi? Where'd that one come from? It's like number, but, uh, more cute. Let's just forget that one. I don't think we should reference his old number at all. Um, how about Bob? Uh... Is that just because of his hairstyle? That's really reaching. Actually, I kind of like it. If it's too plain, how about Bobby? Hmm, that isn't bad. Right? Then number one is hereby renamed... Stop it, you two! You don't understand it at all! A boy doesn't want a name that sounds cute! You... you don't think so? That was quite an outburst. <laughs> the kid has a point. We need something with more panache. How about Silva? Silva? His hair and pendant are both silver. I like it. It's got a certain mystique about it. Silva! Yeah! It sounds cool! Well, if his old buddy Laffy said approves, then Silva it is. Well done, first mate. Praise from you is wasted on me. Huh. <laughs> then consider he's from Silva instead. Right. Time to go give him the good news. Hey! The Moloch formerly known as Number One. You've got a new name. I'm glad he got a good name. Maybe we should have put a little more thought into naming you, too. That's all right. You need to steer your own ship, right, Aizen? You're the one who taught me that. <laughs> you know just what to say, don't you? Moloch, formerly known as Number Two. <laughs> oh, I love this party. Dang it. They're all really sweet. And I really freaking missed Savage. I didn't know I missed him this much. Right, we have a skit here. Magulu gave it her all. Magilu, what were you up to while we were lost in the Earth Pulse? I was ringing the bell. The rift was open the whole time. Couldn't you hear me? I don't remember hearing any bells. She was fighting with Lord Melchior. She really gave it her all. Bianfu, don't give him the wrong impression. But you endured so much. It was... it was so moving. Yes, yes, I did endure. It was so hard not to laugh. Did the old man tell you a joke or something? It was a staring contest, and oh, the faces that old man can make. I kept picturing him as a young man, but with that same wrinkled face, and it was so hard not to crack. <laughs> I needed to keep myself in check. My desire to laugh was only broken by the ringing of the bell. Clang! Crash! What a thrill! Wait, was that the only thing that broke Mogilu? Are you asking if he broke my heart? Like I'm fishing for sympathy? That's not what I meant at all! You stood watch over the Earth Pulse Rift for us. I didn't say that! Stop trying to give me a participation medal! Just take it. After all, you don't care either way, right? True that. Oh, dang I love Mogular! <laughs> oh, dear. It's uh, good to have our party back together with a good mood again. It feels really satisfying, actually, after all of the angst that we've been going through <laughs> and like there was a lot of angst <laughs> oh it's better now though less angsty what the heck is this uh hello oh a dragon it looks like it's been captured just like the therians but why would they hold a dragon captive hmm an art connects this place to the earth pulse that's probably why we were taken here. Earth Pulse. So it's got something to do with Enomi Not? That would be the obvious conclusion. I don't get it. Explain. Small words. Very well. You're part of all this, too. Velvet. I'm fine now. I promise. All right. I see. You found out Inominat's true identity. So, now that you know, can you still fight him? It's only given me more reason to kill him. And the Shepherd. You're one ice-cold girl. There's still one thing bothering me. Inominat needs to eat malevolence to awaken. Once he does, he'll use his power to suppress negative emotions. But when humans can't create any more malevolence, what will happen to Inominat? He'll run out of things to eat. 
and maybe die? Hmm. Wouldn't he just go back to sleep? But if he does, then his power will fade and humanity will start creating malevolence again, right? In order for Hinomi not to eternally suppress negative emotions... He needs an infinite, powerful source of malevolence to feed off of. For example, that produced by an immortal dragon. Which would make this place a sort of dragon farm, created so he could control humanity forever. You can't be serious! Just speculation, but it all makes sense. They can't think of Malakim as anything but tools. Just how much will they sacrifice for their ideal world of tranquility? We don't dare free it. It'd be too dangerous. I know. Damn the Abbey and their twisted morality. So, um, dragon farms, huh? <laughs> oh man, it's another thing that they mentioned in Zisteria that I'm just like, wow. They actually brought it back in Berseria. God dang it. The development team did a great job with this game. Oh my god. Anyway, we have another skit here, a captive dragon. What was it that I believed in all that time? The image I'd built of the Abbey is crumbling from the bottom up. Please cheer up, Madame Eleanor. You'll make me depressed too. Is this about the dragon farm? Yes. I strongly doubt even the Abbey has the power to manipulate dragons so freely. Then that dragon... Wasn't a dragon before it came here? That's the natural assumption. They probably brought the Moloch here as a captive, then turned him into a dragon. Just like Melchior did, eh? Is there no line they won't cross? I don't know what to say. It's not your fault, Madame Eleanor! But spawning dragons in addition to Therians... Do you think they'll figure out a way to make humans, too? Yes. Wait, that's awful! I can't believe you went there! Uh... Well, um... Yeah. At least this explains a lot of stuff about the Hexen Islands Asteria. Especially the fact that there were so many dragons there. Um... Although some of the enemies weren't dragons, I don't think. I don't know, some of them were really weird. <laughs> Oh man, I just really, really love this. <laughs> like, even if you haven't watched Zysteria, or if you're not interested in Zysteria or whatever, like, maybe go and have a look at some of the stuff from Hexadile. Because it's actually really interesting in relation to this. I mean, you don't have to, obviously, but I just think it's cool. Oh man, I think everything to do with Zysteria is cool, though. I'm a freaking nerd. <laughs> Oh man, okay, let me go down this way. Seriously, which Calyx is this? Ah, uh, I should know! Oh no, oh no, oh no, oh no, oh no. Oh, oh, oh no. Oh, oh, oh no. No, 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 no. Crap. Are we ready for this? Nope. No. Oh my god, I'm gonna die. Why are they all coming after me? It's like they know I'm trying to escape. No, I can't. Okay, this is fine. What the? Aizen, I hate you. Okay, fight. I wasn't gonna fight you, but Aizen's forced me to get back up. Oh, uh, dang it. Okay, yeah, that was gonna happen, wasn't it? Okay. Uh, oh, that's my first elixir, actually. Huh. Interesting. Why can't you use a Oh! Wait, why didn't I die? I'm so confused! I still need a lot of training. Is training hard? 
It's necessary, so no, I don't think so. Hmm, <laughs> classic honor roll student. Okay, I wasn't actually going to do that fight, but um, Aizen kept reviving me, so <laughs> I ended up just doing it anyway. Oh well, it's fine, it's cool. Velvet? What is it? I was once your sister's child, right? Then my father is... Look, you were reborn, right? Yeah. Honestly, I really don't know anything about how being reborn works. But to me, what you see, what you hear, and what you feel, that's what's important. Whoever we used to be in another life, I'm me now, and you're you. That's all there is to it. Velvet. That's true. Aizen said that not all Malakim are humans who have been reborn, right? Does that mean they could be reincarnations of birds or fish or beasts? That's not, 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 not true! So, if a boy was a dog in a past life, that wouldn't make him part of the dog's family now. Yeah. I'm me, I guess. But you're Velvet's cute little pup, aren't ya? Mogilu. Be careful. I bite. Oh, have mercy! I take it all back, just don't bite me! Rebirth is like the Earth in Historia. You're simply built on a larger foundation. But that's not special. Everyone's lives are founded on the past. So, I'm just me. Yep. You're you, and no one else. You're Fee. Oh, that's super sweet. Right, we have another skit here. Is Avid's hunch. Hey, first mate. Who was that horned demon with the old man? I don't know. I thought I felt something different about him. If only for just a moment. Did you feel it too? I said, I don't know. I see. <laughs> You're impossible, you know that? We've come across him before, but we never really fought him. My guess is Melchior is controlling him with some sort of illusion. I see. Then it's probably good you didn't fight. A straight battle against him wouldn't be an easy thing. How do you know that? Intuition. I have a nose for these things. There's something fishy about him. That scar on his face. He couldn't be. What's the matter, Aizen? You've gone pale. Forget it. It's nothing. We need to get out of here. Let's go. Okay, we're going. Also, like, Zavid is pretty much known for having hunches. His uh, answer to everything in Zisteria was, it's just a hunch. Didn't actually know it, even though he probably knew it half the time. Friggin' Zavid. Oh man. Anyway, <laughs> let's um, head back onto the main uh, hex dial now, shall we? We made it! I came here by ship. It's anchored by the southeast beach. Ah, right, here we are, hex dial, the island um, wiped from existence. Holy cow. It hasn't changed much, has it? I thought I could get away from you, but it seems I'm doomed. Buy whatever you like. Thank you, White Tunnels. We will buy a lot of stuff, actually, because we really need stuff. Um, actually, I think we're alright otherwise. Um, which is good. Um, yeah, look at this place. Not the fairy, apparently. I mean, we've got all the, the pillars for the calyxes. We've got the... Just the island itself, it's all exactly as it's supposed to be. Anyway, I might actually end off this episode here. Um, sorry if it's a little bit shorter than other episodes. Um, I know that I cut the last one in a really weird place. Um, but again, th this episode would have been so long, or last episode would have been so long, um, if we had uh, continued on as we were. Anyway. We need to end off now though because I know that the next part is, once again, probably going to be quite long. So, thank you very much for watching guys, I hope you enjoyed this episode, please let me know down below what you thought of everything that happened in this episode here today. I hope you enjoyed everything that happened because there was quite a lot here in the plot and everything, it's jam packed with stuff. Um, so yeah, I hope you enjoyed this, I hope you have a great day, night or whatever the time is for you, and I will see you next time. <laughs>